Hi, folks. Urgelt here. What is a human being? It's not what most of us think. The usual notion is that we are an animal whose health is governed by genetics, environment, food and water intake, and the occasional disease. All of those things are true, but they aren't true enough. What's missing is an understanding of the human body not as an animal, but as a community of organisms living cooperatively. In that community, less than 10% of the cells are genetically human. More than 90% are bacteria. We have evolved as communal organisms, colonies of vast numbers of species. In the gut alone, there are more than 50 trillion bacteria living in a healthy human. Most of these bacteria are not parasites and they don't normally cause disease. In fact, you could not survive without them. This communalism within humans goes back to the very origins of life. For over a billion years, multi-celled organisms have been colonies of diverse species. This diversity expresses itself within human cells, too. Perhaps you know about mitochondria. Mitochondria are organelles within every human cell which play an important role in metabolism. But the mitochondria have their own DNA. They are the descendants of ancient bacteria which invaded a cell and stayed to form a symbiotic relationship. And now we rely on mitochondria for our very lives. Without them we die. Science does not understand all of these symbiotic relationships. We have not yet cataloged all of the species within a human, and we do not know in what ways colonizing bacteria support our health. But there are some things science has learned. Studies have shown that bacterial imbalances are linked to obesity, Irritable bowel syndrome, post-surgical infections, and type 1 diabetes. One clinical researcher has achieved an 80% success rate in treating eczema by using probiotic bacterial supplements. Acne can be treated in some cases with probiotic supplements, too. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Probiotic therapies may be helpful in many different sorts of diseases. Studies have also shown that exposure to bacteria is important during early life. Infants who do not receive that exposure develop into adults with health problems such as immune system disorders and allergies. Most of us are sexually attracted to the appearance of health in a prospective partner and that preference applies especially to healthy skin. Healthy skin is an advertisement for a body with healthy symbiotes. When you kiss your partner or taste her skin, you are doing more than expressing passion or emotion. On an instinctual level, you are engaging in a very ancient survival strategy.
you are seeking healthy symbiotes. Modern medicine has come to rely heavily on antibiotics to kill disease-causing bacteria. But we are groping in the dark when it comes to understanding the effects of these treatments on the body's natural symbiotes. We are also living in an age that is obsessed with cleanliness. We use antibacterial soap to wash our bodies sterilize our kitchens with toxic cleansers, treat our clothing with bleach and other poisons. We are waging war against infectious diseases. But I wonder to what extent we are fooling around with something we don't understand, because we need Trillions upon trillions of bacteria to survive. The trick is to get the right bacteria into our bodies and create the conditions for them to thrive. But which are the right ones? Only a few strains have been positively identified and made available as nutritional supplements. And over-the-counter supplements may not perform as advertised. Many of the pills you can buy contain only dead bacteria. We are living in a dark age of ignorance about the human body. Modern medicine is only just beginning to decipher the ways in which health is maintained by symbiotes. Perhaps in some future age, medicine will consist largely of releasing specific strains of bacteria into the body. But that day is far in the future. Here are my recommendations. First, don't neglect active culture yogurt in your diet. Second, don't go overboard with sterilizing your life. Exposure to bacteria, especially for babies and toddlers, but for the rest of us too, is necessary. Antibacterial soap and toxic cleansers are especially bad ideas unless used specifically to prevent the spread of a specific disease. Third, if you suffer from a disease or health problem of some sort, talk to your doctor and let her guide you in determining if probiotic therapies might help you, and if so, which therapies are right for you. And finally, when you are thinking about your health, keep in mind what a human being is. It's not what most people think. Thank you for watching.